stay with your aunt and uncle for a little while. You'll be safe here. Where are you going? Something your mom and I have to do. I want to go with you. Yeah, you have to go. Peter Parker has daddy issues, but is the new Spider-Man amazing? Not much to tell, really. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another week at the movies. This week, we're talking about the amazing Spider-Man. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Mr. Parker. Not much to tell, really. Peter lives with his aunt and uncle. Did you catch that spider guy yet? No, but we will. This guy wears a mask like an outlaw. I think he's trying to do something maybe the police can't. Can't? <laughs> there is a scene very late in The Amazing Spider-Man where some New York crane operators help create a path for Spidey to swing to Oscorp and save the day. The stunning visuals in IMAX maxed with a fabulous score by James Horner actually sent a chill up my spine and I felt my chest raise up out of my body. It was at that moment when The Amazing Spider-Man went from being a really good movie to being a really great one. I can't tell you how happy I am to say that. As a child, there was probably three superheroes for me. Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man. And Spider-Man 2 was what I believe to be the first truly great superhero movie ever made. Sadly, the closing of Sam Raimi's trilogy was a bit of a narrative disaster. It looked great and had some nice moments, but truthfully, the plot was just awful. Strangely though, Raimi felt that this was the proper way to close it. I was, at first, a bit perturbed by this. After witnessing what they have just come up with, I may never feel the need to watch that movie again. The Amazing Spider-Man is big, exciting, intimate, funny, romantic, awe-inspiring, and more than anything, a deeply emotional ride through the life of a boy with a terrible gift that he must use for the good of mankind. Now you will hear complaints about it being a reboot or that somehow watching high schoolers fall madly in love is akin to Twilight, as if nobody swooned before Edward the Vampire came around, but these are idiotic notions that should not stop you from taking this ride. Yes, this is the origin story of Peter Parker, and there are certain notes that must be hit, but that's all such a small part of the whole thing that it's laughable to say that this is anything like watching Raimi's version 10 years ago. This time around, Sony chose director Mark Webb, the man that changed the romantic comedy with 500 Days of Summer, and it's just an inspiration to see what this man is capable of already. The casting in this film is also top-notch, everyone from Martin Sheen's funny and soulful Uncle Ben to Dennis Leary's no-nonsense Captain Stacy to Ray Fiennes' mad scientist turned lizard Dr. Connors are just expertly executed. However, it was the impeccable casting of the two fabulous leads in Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone as Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy that just steal the show. They are so good together in this movie that you hope they get so much more screen time together in the inevitable sequel. As a matter of fact, if we're to lodge any complaint with this film, it would be that there's not enough of them together. Luckily, Garfield is so damn good by himself that he could carry this movie in his sleep, but he doesn't. He is completely immersed in this character and the audience is rewarded for it. I love Tobey Maguire's Peter, but Garfield is the Parker kids grew up with reading their comics on the page and finally we got him in real life. I could talk for hours about the quality of this film or go on to explain the plot of this film, but then I would just be taking away precious time that you could spend watching it. So, turn me off, get your popcorn and strap yourself in for one of the best rides of the summer. You won't be disappointed. Four stars for the amazing Spider-Man. Please ask Ted to move out so we can move on with our lives. I'm not that psyched to just, like, kick him out. Oh. Laurie, hey, you're home early. Who are these girls? Oh, my God, where are my manners? Laurie, this is Angelique, Heavenly, Shireen, and Sauvignon Blanc. I swear to God, her name is Sauvignon Blanc. Show you a Chevron cat. I must start by saying that I hate the family guy. But I love Seth MacFarlane. I know that sounds very odd, but it's true. There's just something about that show that keeps me from caring about any of the characters or laughing at any of the jokes. However, what Seth got wrong in The Family Guy, he gets very right in the story of a boy whose talking teddy bear has grown into a pot-smoking horn dog. <laughs> it doesn't hurt that he surrounded his computer-generated star with some top-tier actors 
at the top of their comedic game. Mark Wahlberg and Mila Kunis are both very entertaining as a couple that are trying to make their relationship work. Wahlberg's character John just can't seem to grow up with Ted around, so he's forced to kick Ted out on his own. However, even with Ted gone, he just keeps going back for more of his old teddy bear. So this forces the teddy himself to have to make the decision that John can't. Ted is a super fun film that entertains from beginning to end and is oddly quite sweet in its final act. It has its problems and some of the jokes fall flat, but the majority of this film is a laugh out loud riot to be enjoyed by the masses. Three stars for Ted. $150,000. I'm supposed to give to some woman and kid I've never even met? I don't understand. You don't have any sisters. <laughs> I do now. Having an artist of any kind for a father can be a truly difficult position for a child. Art and its forms can capture the human imagination so profoundly that a truly great artist disappears into his work. Some great artists find a balancing act, but most, like the father to Chris Pine's character Sam in this film, just can't do it in a way that is meaningful to their child. My father was kind of like this, an extremely loved and feared executive producer and recording engineer. My father never seemed to have time for me, and while I loved the opportunity to grow up in recording studios, most of the time I just wanted my dad to say something nice to me. For me, this caused a yearning for a deeper relationship as I grew older. However, for Sam and Frankie, played by the lovely Elizabeth Banks, it just made them want to have nothing to do with him. Now, in this film, it is very understandable for these two to hate their dad. They were both born from separate mothers, and the only thing they have in common is their hatred for their father. Sam's quest in this film to get to know his sister seems like the only sort of deep family journey he may have ever had, and has clearly longed for. As an audience, we understand this and feel that longing as well. The main issue with this film from the very talented Alex Kirkman lies not in the characters but in the plotting. By letting the fact that Sam is Frankie's brother hang in the wind for so long, I felt that it kind of set themselves up for a partially conventional third act turn. Luckily the actors save it and the dialogue is spot on. Banks delivers the best performance of her career here and I can't tell you how satisfying it was to see Michelle Pfeiffer as Sam's mom. She really knocks it out of the park. So while an imperfect film, People Like Us is a deeply beautiful meditation on the difficulty of being raised by a distant father and the journey we will take to find family. Three stars for People Like Us. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, the amazing Spire Kid!
in two weeks where we'll have our biggest show ever! The Dark Knight Rises! Want more movies, reviews, and videos? Visit our website online at www.thankufw.com and as always, we thank you for watching. The Amazing Spider Kid!